What up, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy P. Skip. Welcome to the best half hour of your entire Tuesday. You know what time it is. It's time to get into his court. And my squad would be T Mac. Hola. Chili Will. Gracias, gracias, amigos. Let's do this. Everybody, good to see you. Welcome to another amazing show of Into His Courts. Let's get into this. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3 in the Amplified says this. Now in Haran, the Lord said to Abraham, go away from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you abundantly. And make your name great, exalted and distinguished. And you shall be a blessing, a source of great good to others. And I will bless, do good for, benefit those who bless you. And I will curse, that is subject to my wrath and judgment. The one who curses, despises, dishonors, has contempt for you. And in you. All the families or nations of the earth will be blessed. This is what God said to the children of Israel at the beginning, in the beginning, from the beginning. I said that to say recently, Deshaun Jackson, the wide receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles, has been penalized for making anti-Semitic comments on Instagram about the Jews. And what he did was, in his comment that he put out there, he partnered with or said the Jews and Hitler were alike. And the worst thing you could ever do to a Jew is put them two names together and say, y- y'all, y'all alike. Facts. True. True. And so... <clears throat> this caused a major upheaval and not just football, but in sports, period. And Steven Jackson, which is ex-NBA player, who was also um, Floyd. George Floyd. George Floyd's best friend, best friend mm-hmm. has been st- speaking out about Black Lives Matter, and he sided with Uh, Deshaun Jackson not knowing everything that Deshaun Jackson had said. Mm -hmm. He since retracted his statement. Deshaun Jackson since has put out a apology. But the thing about words is you can't unsay them. And Deshaun Jackson said what he said knowing that both of his owners are Jews. Right. And so, what I love is another fellow Jewish individual, New England's wide receiver, Julian Edelman, who is uh, Jewish, invited him to D.C. to take a tour of the Holocaust Museum. And Edelman said he's willing to go to the Black History Museum for both of them to be educated so that when he speaks, he knows from whence he's speaking from. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can't just tweet stuff that sounds smart. (laughs) Or that sounds like, dude, I put that out there, I'll get some likes for this. People people do it all the time. (laughs) Right. You deep, deep in doo-doo, bro. What you got got deep in. Freshly squeezed, run. (laughs) Right. You know, you cannot say that kind of stuff because how would they, how would Deshaun Jackson, how, what would the reaction would have been if they would have partnered like blacks? I'm just waiting to, I'm just waiting to dive in, Doc. Just, just well, let me just. Well, just, let, let you get in there, PT. Just let me know. When you, I can jump, now, let me say in. this. Just for y'all, for y'all who don't know, Timothy McMurtry <laughs> is the state representative for Christians United for Israel. State director. State director. And so he has a lot to say about that portion right there. So I'll let you go ahead well, in. Before he 
talk, let me also, as a qualifier, go, go right. ahead, dive on gives it. him much more authority, much more background, much more intelligence right. than was displayed by Sean Jackson when he made his comments. Right. All exactly. Right, go ahead. Thank Jeff. you for that qualifier. Yeah. And so, so what we're going from is an uneducated uh, comment to an educated comment. <laughs> All right. So go ahead. And for those of you all who cannot see me, I'm also African-American. So I can come at it from both angles, from the Jewish perspective piece as well as African-American piece. And I think that this really dives into a couple of things that are going on here. I think that, you know, Deshaun, and I like Deshaun, great receiver. I liked him his first stint with Philadelphia when he left. I think he went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, came back. So he's been a force since he's been you know, out, out, out of college, thinking with the Cal in, in college. But the, the first thing is that we are in a heightened sense of racial reckoning right now. So if nothing else, no. the timing of the comments were, were off. Right. And the association with Hitler, who uh, uh, sponsored the extermination of six million Jews in the Holocaust, associated How him many? six million. Six million. So associating him with the arch nemesis of the Jews and putting them in the same category was an insult of epic proportions. And so it maybe it speaks to his misinformedness and having Jewish owners of the team he's playing for, you know, they sign your check, bro. That wasn't the most appropriate thing to say. But I think it gets even deeper than that when he talked about the quote, which was attributed to Hitler and Snopes, the internet investigator, to see if quotes are real or not. Snopes came out and said that they hadn't found any proof that that was ever attributed to Adolf Hitler. So that adds to it. And the tail end of the comment said that white America would be shocked when they found out that as they were doing all the antagonistic things they've done historically to African Americans, most recently the George Floyd incident is a microcosm of that, that they would be shocked to find out that they were actually dogging out, essentially, the real children of Israel, right. trying to replace Jewish people Ashkenazi Jews in particular, European ones that are of white skin with black skin. So what we have here is a, 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 a cavalcade <laughs> of error. When we go into scripture, He's using big words. When we go into scripture, I think that part of what Deshaun, and I'm, you know, this is all speculation, Tim McMurtry editorial commentary. I think part of what he was trying to advocate for was, hey, black people have a prominent place in biblical times, in the word of God, in the stature of mankind. I'll give them that. But you mm -hmm. can go to scripture, and scripture says that without punching Jewish people in the face, so to speak. Right. When you look at Abraham, I think you talked about Abraham early on in this right. telecast. Abraham was betrothed or had relations with, with Hagar, right. the Egyptian. Right. Last time I checked, Egypt was in Africa. Right. That puts immediate relationship between <laughs> Jewish folks and, and Africans. African folk. Later on, Moses married an Ethiopian woman. Ethiopia is another place that last time I checked Africa. was in Africa. When you go to the New Testament and you look in the upper room, the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Ghost came and talked to all the 120 people that were there, it said Jewish people from every nation right. around the world. That would include the continent of Africa as well. So what Deshaun kind of showed was he had some incomplete history right. that he was trying to speak on, and it came back really to, you know, bite him where you know where. I think the other piece that's a teachable moment here is that the Jewish people, to their credit, have a very, very strong lobby, both with Christians United for Israel, of which I am the state director of Wisconsin for, and Pastor Skip and Pastor Melvin are also very, very heavily involved with. Pastor Melvin is the state director for Daughters of Zion, which is the prayer underlay of the organization that undergirds the organization in prayer nationally. She's the state director for that. So we are heavily involved with supporting of Israel and the Jewish people. Also been to Israel twice, and the size of Israel being 8 million square miles, Lake Michigan is 22 million square miles, meaning that Israel, the entire country, can fit inside Lake Michigan roughly three times. 
Now, what I'm getting to is that there's another organization that Israel has called APAC, the American Israel uh, Political Affairs Committee. And they also lobby. And all I'm saying by lobby is you protect the image and the culture and the legacy of your people. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with Wooly Wade protecting the family name of the Wade family. Nothing right. wrong with Pastor Skip Henderson protecting the name of the Hendersons. Nothing wrong with Tim McMurtry protecting the name of the McMurtrys. And what can be learned here, as we've seen with this vociferous pushback, to the there he goes Jackson. with those big words again. <laughs> <laughs> very, very vocal. Hey, the vo very, vo very vocal. Vociferous is not a big word. <laughs> <laughs> the vocal pushback means that, hey, when you're going to be talking about a certain group of people, painting them with a broad brush, you can expect some pushback. Always. African Americans have been able to do some of that we've seen with this global empathy that people have had. Now, you know what? African Americans have been treated wrongly. We can also learn to be able to take up for our group, our people, right. in stuff like this. So when we're falsely accused of stuff, all of my rapists, all of my gang members, all of my, uh-uh, we can push back as well. So there are a number of different things going on here. And I'll wrap it up with this so we'll wait and get a word in edgewise, is that when you are talking on this particular level, one, you have to understand the historical acrimony between the Nazi Hitler and the Jewish people. Right. Jewish people next to African Americans are probably the most sensitive to be talked about people in the world right. based on how they have been treated. Correct. Neither, neither one of us signed up. Let me be the one that people don't need to be talking about. But no, we went through the most. Right. You know what I'm saying? And as one, going last piece I'll finish with is, for a while, the Jewish community has been partners with the African American community. Uh -huh. when, when, when Dr. King, who was probably the most notable civil rights or most referenced civil rights icon, when he was marching, he marched with, I think the guy's name was Theodore Heschel, which was mm -hmm. a Jewish rabbi who stood up. The three people that died, the movie Mississippi Burning, was based on two white gentlemen and an African American man who were killed trying to do some voter registration type things. The two people that were white that were killed were Jewish people. Right. So they shed blood on behalf of black people. So right. when you're going to have those kind of comments, you want to be a little bit more informed and at least sensitive no to the historical backlay of what's going on. One, to minimize any backlash you may get. But number two, if you're going to be speaking in a deep kind of a way, make sure that you're able to educate people in a way and not something that you have to backtrack on yourself because it was erroneous from the jump. No doubt. Yeah, some, something, somebody that I uh, respect uh, immensely told me when I was a child, and I, I never forgot this, is that the number one problem in the world is and always will be ignorance. Yeah. Right. I agree. It yeah. just, you know, when I was, when they told me that, I really probably wanted to go get an ice cream cone. I didn't know I would <laughs> right. eat it. <laughs> right. But the more I grew and the more I saw and the more I interacted in my life with people, I found that a lot of times when you don't have the right information, mm -hmm. it can lead to problems. No, right. no problem. In this, in this uh, specific case, uh, Deshaun Jackson didn't have the right information. Right. right. He didn't have it. Uh, he was ignorant to the facts. Right. right. Had he had the facts, maybe he would have positioned his comment and his editorial a little differently. Um, when, it, when you talk about uh, the, the history of black people and the history of Jewish people, like you said, Pastor Tim, they have a similarity as far as some of the torture or being the groups of people that um, was chosen to go through so much just ruthless, mm -hmm. right. good word, ruthless, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. consistent. And I will add the American Indian, the Native Americans Native in American, that too, yeah. to be in yeah. that same group. Yeah. So those three groups of people historically have been treated the most ruthless on earth. I mean, the American Indians, the Native Americans, almost annihilated. Yeah. Right. And Hitler, Hitler in, uh, during World War II, goal was to Exterminate the exterminate Jews. Exterminate the Jews. Right. Yeah. So these type of things have been 
targeted at uh, Native Americans, black people, and Jewish people historically. It's a fact. I'm not making mm -hmm. this up. Anybody right. who wants to look into history can look into it and get the facts about this. Right. But what it also has done is it has made it a very, very sensitive issue. Right. Mm -hmm. Extremely sensitive. Um, we talked about this before that Spike Lee made the comment that the swastika sticker um, in Germany uh, and what it meant to Jewish people was similar to what the Confederate flag means to black people in America. Mm -hmm. Or even the white hood. Yeah, in the white hood, yeah, mm -hmm. from, from the Same thing. Plan, the white yeah. hood. So, so those type of things um, are, are deep-rooted in black people and Jewish people respond to it even to this day. Right. Even we, when we weren't there, mm -hmm. when we see that, it just uh, it gives you a feeling of that time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's, it, it, it's a relic of the worst of what humanity The worst of what human beings can be. Yeah. The worst right. of what they can be. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Deshaun Jackson, um, I, don't, I, I don't know him. He is an outstanding football player, and um, I hope that his apologies are sincere, mm -hmm. and I hope it's just not monetary. I, 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 don't think, I, don't, I don't think this is something that you should be able to purchase your way out of. Right. Um, I hope he has to you know, take some accountability for this. But I would say that- uh, Ownership time, is making him do that. Yeah, they, yeah they're making him do They're it. making him do and some- he, And he shouldn't, be, he shouldn't be rebellious towards it. He no, no I, I think the other thing, which, which, which is great, going back to this time that we, I'm gonna jump no, in front of you, Pastor Skip. The, the, the fact that we're in this time where we can have real conversations right. about what's going on, first the pandemic, the whole train of the COVID-19, then the caboose of that being the racial reckoning piece, this can go into that same pot of gumbo where we're having conversations that maybe should have been had decades ago, right. but are now at the forefront. So what happens is there has to be some space for one, talked about the ignorance, to grow. for the ignorance to be on display yeah, yeah. so I can have a chance grow. to grow. We so don't necessarily have to have a, a cancel culture where you just can't make no mistakes at all. No. Hey, no. No. every time you make a mistake, you get a chance to learn from it so it doesn't necessarily be a, a total washout and a total loss because you've learned from it. Right. Your feedback and pushback just was the cost of that learning experience right. for you, the price you had to pay for that valuable learning that you were able to get as a result of your stuff being exposed. And I think, I think Pastor Skip, that leads us into the next thing you were gonna talk about, which was, uh, you mentioned, uh, one of the Jewish football players, world champion football players, and when he heard it- Julian it, Edelman. Julian Edelman, if you just speak a little bit about what, what his reaction was to uh, Deshaun Jackson. Okay, Edelman said, hey listen, Edelman pretty much gave him a pass. because like, I know him as a football player, but I don't know him as a human being. Mm -hmm. But he said, what we can do is take this time to be, come to DC, mm -hmm. we'll go to DC, meet me at the Jewish Holocaust Museum, I'll meet you at the Black Holocaust Museum, and we can educate one another. Right. We can educate one another. You know, I've heard this phrase that says, the cure for ignorance is knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, that's all we need is knowledge. Speaking of football, let's stay with football. The Big Ten has announced that they will only play conference games for their schedule for the fall. <laughs> Check this out. Uh -huh. The top five power conference, which would be the ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-10, SEC, uh -huh. because of this, will lose a collective four billion dollars in football revenue that's billion with a b billion with a large b wow that's this year mm. in one season four one billion. season four billion them five wow. and 1.2 billion in tickets mm. and, and the pac-10 has already come out and followed suit uh. they will only play conference games so out of the power five yeah. you got two already saying conference games only. And wow. I was looking forward to the Notre Dame Wisconsin game at, at uh, Lambeau Field this year. I was yeah, try to, man, that was this year, wasn't that it? That was this year. I, I, uh, wanted to, I wanted to try to make that game. Uh, 
Who'll be happening? That's fine. <laughs> now, is this in some sort of effort to stem the whole COVID-19 spread piece, or is this something else? No. This is, this is, this is them still trying to make some money and still allow, allow athletes. Because you have to look at the athlete standpoint. This is how I get my job from now on. Mm-hmm. This is how I get into my career is I got to be seen by coaches and scouts so I can get a job. You know, and so it's an effort to still let there be entertainment. Because the thing that people don't realize is folks will always pay big money for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Always. They always have. Facts. Always always have have. and always will. Yeah. You know, and so here's them still getting entertainment, which means we're still getting some of that money. Mm -hmm. And the kids are still on display but yet we're trying to do it the safest way that we can. So all of this is, is, is stemming from COVID-19. In all of it. And, 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 and so does it raises another question before we move on to the next topic. Really skip, just real quick, what does that mean for bowl games at the end of the season then? Don't know. if They, they, they haven't gotten that far. Well, they, I think they're still trying to figure out what the season's going to look like. They, and they have, uh, they have said that the people who – uh, do the um, selecting for the bowl games and the championship game. Yeah. Haven't announced any plan, plans of changing their approach. Gotcha. Here, here's my thing. If you're Doritos mm-hmm. and you're sponsoring a bowl, how much revenue are you going to make from that? From commercials only, because that's it. Yeah. You, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't making no Doritos that, you know. Yeah. Maybe somebody might buy some chips. But who's going to come over to the house and, wa- and watch the game with you, you know? So there, there, there's a lot of stuff up there in the air to figure out what's happening. Mm. But I do see, I do think this is a positive, a positive step forward okay. in trying to bring back some normalcy, but doing it in such a way that you're being safe with it versus just we all in. You know, well, I think I think also these moves are going to be where the strong will survive. Mm-hmm. The people who are marginal, some of those teams, black colleges, um, some black colleges have already announced that they're scrapping their football program this year. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. They're scrapping their program this year mm-hmm. because they just can't afford it. But some of those black colleges and some of those small colleges and medium sized colleges, the amount of money they get from playing those big power conferences mm-hmm. are huge yeah. to right. their conference and to their revenue. Yeah. Right. And to not have that opportunity, right. to ha- not have that opportunity is a serious blow to their total athletic program. I, that was just what I, was about, I was just about to say that it probably is a big chunk of their entire athletic department's yes. budget annually. Yeah. No yeah. doubt. Because think about how much money, uh, uh, as much as we, we hate to see like Duke play Grambling, Right. How much money is Grambling getting out of that game? Yeah. Well, I, I, on a small scale, what I know for facts, one of my uh, um, former players, uh, Dante Jackson, is the head coach at Grambling. Mm-hmm. One of my good friends, Terry Porter, is the head coach at Portland. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They played each other. Okay. They gave Grambling $100,000. Wow. Just to schedule the game. Just to come up there and play them. Wow. Mm-hmm. And Grambling won. What? So I tease Terry all the time, like you paid Dante a hundred thousand dollars to come peel y'all here. <laughs> Boy, Terry, <laughs> that was right. not a good business and, and move, bro. That's just small. Right. Yeah. Portland is not a big school. Right. So you can imagine how much money the Dukes of the world are paying. And the Kentuckys, right? Yeah. Hey, let's yeah. stay with football. This one here is one that's been kind of like wow, eye-opening. Patrick Mahomes, MV, NF, um, Super Bowl MVP, uh, starting quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. And last year's league MVP. League MVP also. Signed a 10-year, $503 million deal <laughs> with $477 million guaranteed. Is that a misprint, man? Nah, bruh. Hold on. <laughs> he getting baseball player money. Hold on. He getting baseball money for 16 to 18 games. <laughs> baseball player 162 and... games. Yeah. He get yeah. that for a couple of weekends. Man. That's half a billion dollars That's all day long. That's half a billion. For a in couple of weekends. 
and, and for 10 years. Man, what about the weekends? Man. This is how you put that in perspective. Russell Wilson was the highest paid player. Uh-huh. He was, which is a quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks. Mm-hmm. He was getting $35 million a year. Patrick Mahomes is making $45 million Ooh. a year. You bested him by $10 million. That's a whole lot of money, man. But Ooh, again, congratulations, Pat. Hey. Can I hold about 150000 That's hey. chump change for you. Hey. You can send it to Timothy L. <laughs> <laughs> right. hey, but look, if you're if you getting that kind of money, we got to get the man a nickname, man. You got to be known like money bags. Magic or right. you know, something, man. Yeah. I mean, you can't yeah. be your regular name making a half a billion. What does that do? Just while well, I'll go ahead and finish. No, no, go, go ahead. What does that do? Did, 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 did that get signed yet with Dallas? No, no. they franchised him. And, and the uh-huh. deadline to actually negotiate new contracts is coming up this week. Uh-huh. Yeah, they fran- he, no, he got the franchise tag. I know, but they still can, they got right. time to get a long-term deal done this week for those that, franchise tags. Yeah. Does this deal, I guess two questions. Number one, I'm, I'm just, because we talking about, we, we just pontificating. Throw it out there. Is this the best deal for Patrick Mahomes? And number two, what does it do for quarterbacks around the league, Dak, et cetera? Well, let, let, first of all, I don't know anybody who had turned down $503 million. That's the best deal anybody's got in football. In sports, in sports. period. This is yes, the biggest contract right. in the history of sports. So, so, yeah, it was the best deal for him. We'll go with that one. Okay. But what it does for quarterback, for Dak in particular, it doesn't do anything because you're not on that tier. Mm. You're not in that top tier quarterback. Haven't won a Super Bowl. No. Mm. Haven't been Super Bowl MVP. Haven't been successful in the playoffs. Haven't been in, haven't haven't been a league MVP. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. So you're that second to third tier quarterback. Mm-hmm. So your maybe yours may be like a hundred million for ten years, or or or, or two hundred million for no, ten years. No, it'd be more than that. Right now, even two hundred million under the franchise tag, they paying him thirty one million for one year under the franchise tag. Mm. Well, that may be where he'll stay. We got, he, they can do it two times, and then right. after that, something has to happen. So that being said, Dak, not in this tier, not on this level, franchise, nah. quote-unquote handicapped. He's handicapped at $31 million For this year. For this year. Let's handicap say, me. Let, okay. <laughs> let's say two or three years out, other folks continue to creep up toward Patrick Mahomes' right. $45, 47000000 million. Mm-hmm. Will he then be, let's say, underpaid four years from now if he stays at this, you know, success rate that he has and you've got some other lesser magicians than mm-hmm. him making in even the $40 million neighborhood? That's a good question. Can I, can I answer that? Go ahead. I, that, that can happen, mm-hmm. but that's less likely in football. It's a okay. 10-year contract. Mm-hmm. The average life of football players was five years, six years. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and then when you start talking about the decline in your youth mm-hmm. as you go on, he's getting this during his prime. Right. Ten years in, he may be that good still, mm-hmm. but in, in the market, definitely, the market hasn't gone down, it's going up. Yeah. But I think this was the best insurance policy because you could have tried to play a little more chess uh-huh. and messed around and got hurt. Look what happened to RG3. Right. He got hurt. Yeah, hasn't been the same since. Yeah, he, he lost all of his money. Yeah. So, you know, those type of things can happen. So as a hedge, um, a half a billion for 10 years, Right. Uh, yeah. you probably want to cross the pro- yeah. cross the bridge of... So if you're going to err on caution, get your half a billion hey, cautionary hey, in, the fa- in the famous words of Tim McMurtry, a bird in the hand. <laughs> <laughs> Better than two in the bush. And you right. know the rest. <laughs> yes, sir. <Right. laughs> hey, listen. Great show. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Right here on Joy 1340 AM, 98.7 FM. Also on YouTube, Into His Courts, as well as Facebook. Until next week, peace.